Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Betty Atruda. Welcome back to Imperator Rome, where the world is starting to shape up in some rather interesting ways. In particular, Phrygia has just exploded, and I am very, very happy about that one. That opens up all sorts of interesting opportunities to potentially get a foothold on the far side of the Aegean Sea. That'd just be beautiful. And Rome is having a bad time of it too. The Slayers is actually not doing great either, to be honest. I think they've got themselves... Yeah, they've actually got themselves a bit of a civil war going on. So both Phrygia and the Slayers are having a very bad time indeed. Egypt's doing fine though. Egypt is the most chill empire. They're just chilling out. They've integrated some vassals. Can't even be bothered to go and conquer Cyrene. They're just sitting there being massively rich and successful. And good for them, quite frankly. We haven't spoken about it much, by the way, but Carthage is not doing great either. They're not actually doing great in a war over here. I think they've lost a tiny bit of their Spanish territory. That war didn't go well for them either. So yeah, they're not doing great over on that side of the empire, though they have done a good job holding on to Sardinia and Corsica. And of course, they do actually own territory just two spaces over from Rome itself. So you know what? They've got some fun territory at the bare minimum. So today we need to plan some big moves going forward. And uh, I've got myself a couple of ideas here. In particular, I'm floating a big pile of oratory right now. So, uh, the Phrygian Revolt, I'm going to... Ah, okay. I can't actually use oratory to improve my standing with them. Well, you know what? I'll send them some money. I want those guys to be cool with me. Ah, uh, never mind. The reason I can't improve opinion with them is I'm already doing it. Lovely. It turns out I'm one step ahead of myself. Great. As for Apulia, though, I did have a thought about them. So, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, demand tribal vassal status. That's not as dramatic as it sounds. It doesn't mean they're going to start working for me. I think we can still be allies. It just basically means they give me a bit of manpower and I give them a bit of civilization, helping them move from a settled tribe towards being an actual republic or a monarchy, whatever they want to be. And they are actually surprisingly close to accepting that. So, uh, I'm going to actually improve opinion with them, that's absolutely fine, and possibly I'll send them some money just to actually cheer them up a bit further. Because yeah, I might actually be able to be an ally together with having a tribal vast relationship with these guys, because if they do actually become a monarchy or a republic, they will be stronger. They'll lose some armies because they won't get the free clan leader armies anymore, but in the long run, it should be better for them. Anyway, my first move today is, yes indeed, keep a close eye on Phrygia and the Phrygian Revolt, see who looks likely to win that one. Right now, the Phrygian Revolt definitely has the upper hand, 138 cohorts versus just 76. And honestly, Phrygia doesn't have the manpower to train anymore, though they do have a decent amount of money, so they could probably support maybe, I don't know, 20,000 more men in mercenary form, but that's not a huge amount really. We'll see how that develops, because that's not even Phrygia's only problem. They're also being attacked by these small Phoenician settlements down over here, who seem to be doing pretty well and might be about to take a bit of land for themselves. And honestly, I can't imagine Cappadocia is going to stay loyal too much longer. Right now, that's the only significant vassal Phrygia maintains. I can't imagine they're going to hang around forever. And that means our great northern expansion needs to continue. In particular, Green Aetolia, not to be confused with Orange Aetolia over here, these guys need to go down. Because they are actually sitting on some of the territories I'm going to need to form the Pan-Hellenic League. Which is actually a bit of an interesting one, actually. There's something a bit weird about that. So officially to form the Pan-Hellenic League, I need to hold all of these territories. But it does actually say, needs to be owned by Ikea or one of their subjects. Now you may notice, the two of them over there in Spartan territory are held by, you know, Sparta, who are my subjects. Yet the game is saying I haven't actually got those two, so... I'm not 100% sure what's going on. Like, for some reason, the client state doesn't count, but maybe one of the other states, like a feudal tree, would? I've no idea, but I may need to integrate Sparta just to get those territories in. Though I feel like, yeah, those should actually be ticked right now. I mean, I guess the other thing I could do would be, uh, yeah, cancel the client status and just see whether I could get them to resubmit to me. But I suspect at that point they'd just say no, because they only agreed in the first place because we went to war with them. So... Uh, Probably easy just to integrate them down the line. In fact, speaking of which, if we want to integrate them, that's actually going to take a little bit of an improved opinion too. So, uh, go on, continue improving everybody's opinion of me. Now, as for Green Aetolia, I don't want to attack them immediately, however, because they seem to have 29 cohorts, which is a weirdly large amount. But if I actually have a little Luxy over at their economy, they're losing money every month and they're already out of it. So, I suspect... 
if I just get time ticking along here, there's a good chance these guys will have no choice but to start breaking down those cohorts momentarily. And by the way, it's time for the Olympics, which we're going to do, because there's literally no reason not to. First, however, something related to Delos, the island we actually had, took rather recently. So Delos has seen a huge influx of visitors lately, and a reputation for being one of the cities that Heracles passed through. Aha, I see what's going on here. So, we can choose to spend a certain amount of money to support these myths or not. So, I can give up 50 religious power for Delos itself, to actually gain local tax plus 15%, that's going to be tiny, because that's just for that one city, and army movement speed plus 10%. Now that says, just for dare loss, so does that mean just like when I'm passing through, because if so I won't be passing through. Alternatively, gain 50 power, lose money, but I'm getting plenty of money in right now, blessing of strength, but that's for the whole of Ikea, so 10% morale of armies, omen power up, yeah that one. Definitely that one. In fact, actually, that might just have given me, that's just given me enough religious power to sacrifice to the gods. Stability is back up to three. Love it. Oh, and here's one I really wanted to see. So I do indeed have an iron surplus in Hellas, and somebody wants to buy it from me, which would give me the export bonus empire wide heavy infantry discipline plus 5%, plus more money right there. Now that. That is starting to get somewhere. My heavy infantry, plus 25% these days. Love it. And more importantly than anything else, in mere days, the second Stratos is about to reach Sparta, thereby concluding the Grand Ring Road of Greece. And there it is. Oh yeah, roads everywhere. In some ways, I feel like this road was a bit redundant. We could have just like, you know, had it meet here and done a single road down to Epidauros. But you know what? Fine, you do you. And rather sadly, someone from Aetolia did just win the Olympics. We don't know which Aetolia, but that's fine because they're both going to be dead before the next Olympics, so it doesn't really matter. And here's something fun. If I actually want to return from Sparta up here towards Aegeon these days, the game actually calculates the fastest way for me to go is down and around because following the road is faster than walking through the hills because they don't have roads. So that's very, very cool indeed. And here we go. Aetolia. Come on. You're running a massive deficit. You cannot maintain that many troops. Start breaking them down, please. Okay, I'm not sure where they just got that money from, but they're getting money from somewhere. Possibly they're receiving a random one-off gift from someone? I don't know, but they should be going bankrupt. Why aren't you going bankrupt right now? Right, I'm keeping an eye on this. They've got two gold. They're supposed to be losing about eight gold a month. So as we enter the new year, they should go into... There we go. They are now on minus money. But sometimes when you're on minus money, you get free magic money. Just because, yeah, hang on, there's a list of... Uh, here we go. So yeah, when you're actually running a deficit and you run out of money, there might be desperate measures. Friends might appear. There might be a gift from the gods. Generally, bad events you don't want to happen to happen. Though sometimes they can save you for a minute. Not on this occasion, though. They're just going more and more into debt. But they're refusing to break down their troops. Oh, we are so close to the tribal vassal status. Right, send them a gift. Just toss a bit of money in their direction. And we'll see what that does. Because, uh, oh, they might be willing to accept it. Yes, we just need to wait for the diplomat to get home. I've just dropped a save just in case this cancels the alliance automatically. Because you can't simultaneously be an ally and a tribal vassal to someone. But we'll see if this is allowed. And boom. I'm going to get myself some extra manpower for that. Lovely. Ah, yes, indeed. You can't be both. It's one or the other. So they've actually gone over to being a vassal, but a tribal vassal. So as a result of that, yeah, they're no longer actually allies anymore. So I'll protect them if they're attacked. They're not obliged to come and protect me, however. So I'm probably going to go back to the previous save, because I would rather have them as allies than as tribal vassals. Well, I told you are very determinedly not breaking down any troops, so screw it, we'll just bring in some help for this one. We can very easily afford it, let's just get some mercs in. Ah, yes, my old favourites over here. 20 gold a month, in order to have, yeah, Marshal 10, and a good blend of units, including some cavalry, so... Uh, I'll just be recruiting you. There we go. Welcome aboard. We'll just bring you into our territory. You can chill out in Ellis for a bit. Hang on, where else could you chill out? Just so I know the safest place for you. Actually, you could come over here. Just go and chill out over there for a bit. That's right on the border anyway. That's very convenient. Ooh, bit of interesting insight too, by the way. 
We now know where all of Macedon's armies are. 56,000 men chilling out right here. Understandable, really. They're probably a bit scared of us, given how the last war went. Imminent election coming in, and it's going to be the leader of the populist faction. But honestly, I'm kind of okay with him being leader. Sure, powers will cost 10% more, but I'm not going to need religious powers during this term. I've just actually got an omen in, so that's going to be live for a while. He's got really good oratory, really good zeal, pretty darn decent military. Honestly, he's good. I may as well just have him anyway. And there we go. He's now in control. Is that the first populist leader we've actually have? I can't remember whether I allowed this to happen in the past. But you know what? I'm pretty happy with it. It's fine. And the situation in Phrygia is getting messy. I'm assuming that civil wars work like, yeah, total wars over in Stellaris. Because territory is just changing hands constantly. That looks like, yeah, the moment you take a territory, it just moves into your possession. Because, hang on... Yeah, that's not actually being occupied by these guys, that's being occupied by one of the Pontus forces over here. So yeah, there's no actual occupation in peace with these guys, territory just changes hands instantaneously. So Phrygia's managed to win a little bit of territory back over here, presumably, this is where their armies are. But over here, yeah, the Phrygian revolt armies are just on a rampage. That actually really works for me, because if they're just going to trash each other's territory, kill loads of pops, then both of them are going to end up massively weaker at the end of it. Well, Green Aetolia seem to have no interest whatsoever in breaking down their troops, despite the fact it's basically the only thing they're spending money on, and they're suffering a massive deficit as a result of it, but screw it, I guess we'll just go and murder them in that case. So, uh, get the claim down, we want Aetolia, yeah, we want the Aetolia bit of Aetolia, we'll just go in, we'll take the capital with the mercs, I'll send in reinforcements if need be, we'll just slaughter them, this will be a very quick war. Oh, good news for Carthage, though. Sorry, they really turned that war around. They just actually ate everything over here. So, uh, Carthage uh, really flipping locking down the North African coast there. All right, we can now declare war on Green Aetolia and... Oh, hang on. Apulia are willing to actually come and help out with that war. I say come and help out. They won't be able to come and help out. But I can't help but notice... Apulia would be willing to actually assist, despite the fact that Brutia and Seculia are both on the other side. So, would that break up your defensive pact? I don't know. Ooh, if I do that and I invite them. But then again, I wouldn't mind Apulia. They could probably hang on. Could Apulia just eat these guys around them? Because if they could just basically eat all this territory, that would actually work in their favour. They've got 94 cohorts right now. And money. Yeah, they can afford it. They got the manpower. If I do this, they'll basically just go and eat Brutia. That's actually to their advantage. They are actually stronger than Brutia and Seculia put together. I'm doing them a favour if this is basically going to pull them into a war with those guys. Yeah, screw it. We're going to do it. So, we are now going to, yeah, get tyranny up by five. Don't care. It goes down very quickly these days. So, send in the mercenary forces straight at their capital. Because I believe that's actually their only fortress. They haven't fortified the border. No, border is not fortified at all. Keep my own troops out of it for now. If need be, we can send in reinforcements. I've got a good amount of troops to go and help out my mercenaries. But... If their force is primarily just archers and skirmishers, which I strongly suspect it is, we should be able to pretty much deal with that with the Merc forces. But yeah, once again, the AI just basically sits around in low morale mode, and they can't possibly afford to boost up to normal morale at this point. They can't afford the wages. Now, we are also at war with other Aetolia right now. So, uh, they've actually got nothing but that island. How many people are on that island? Eight cohorts. You know what? I might just actually deploy my forces in my fleet, this 15,000, just to go and lock that place down, which is going to be a bit on the expensive side, to be honest. Now, you know what? I won't do that because that's very disruptive. I'll just actually send these guys down to go and take care of that once they're done with this. But as a result of that, get the fleet over here ready to pick them up. And yes, indeed, Brutia is now at war with Apulia and also... They are all mass training boats. Right, they actually want to come over here and help out with the primary war. So that's good. Looks like the 8,000 troops of Aetolia we can see are heading into Sparta. Which is absolutely fine. I'm just not sure where the rest of them are. Because we know they exist. They're somewhere. Oh, and we've got a bit of a mess here. Apulia is actually heading down south. We've also got ourselves the governor of Asia just passed away. We'll sort that out. So yeah, I believe the invasion of Brutia is now underway. Congratulations, guys. You can have that territory. I don't care. 
Also, one of the Green Itolians has just decided to show up into our court, so uh, that's good. Are we sure we should be welcoming him? I feel like this might be a trap, but okay then. I mean, he's not actually very good, so I see no reason to make him a citizen, because that's just another family that's desperately begging for jobs all the time. So, new governor for Asia. He's not the best person for the job, but this guy over here, the Avidii, we do need to give more jobs to the Avidii, and he's just. Local unrest down, that's absolutely fine. You get on with that, that's okay. Though, apparently we now have three out of two trade routes for some reason. Possibly the previous guy was, you've just changed the policy, haven't you? Change it back. I'm not having anything on not trade. Ah, hang on. We have got ourselves uh, the 21,000 troops. Though it would appear that we are going to very easily win with just 10,000. Well, just in case, deploy my troops. They'll be able to move around nice and fast due to the road system. So, uh, yeah, my troops should be able to stand up and take you on. Oh, it's a skill 5 general. Yeah, I see the problem here. Also, the Spartans are getting involved and, oh, you are being, uh, yeah, shredded. You are being very badly shredded. Right, so now we know where their army is and we should be able to go and track it down because, hang on, we've just, oh, we got very lucky there. We've won the siege immediately. So all of that territory is just going to basically fall into our possession right now. You may as well go and just eliminate this army just to make sure, yeah, they've got nothing left. So this territory starts falling to ours straight away. I will actually deploy, hang on, which is the strongest Stratos? First Stratos, you basically head over here and take some of this territory. That's just occupation, so that's not a big deal, really. And we're just getting further and further ahead in tech, which is lovely too. Together with a lot of exports, we are making... We're making plus 20 gold a month, despite the fact we're floating mercenaries. Right, my economy is starting to get out of control. And the war down in southern Italy is going well for Apulia, unsurprising really. Brutia probably don't actually have military access through Rome, so any troops along here can't actually help out. So yeah, basically this is just going to hand southern Italy over to Apulia, which really works for me. These guys are actually going to come over here and then immediately engage my mercenaries in a battle again. No, hang on. They've never fought the mercenaries before, but they're about to be absolutely slaughtered. And uh, I think we might have just wiped that entire stack. Together with, hello, we've got ourselves fugitives. Fugitives from where, precisely? Fleeing a dreadful war with Scordicia. Does anyone know where Scordicia is? I mean, I'm going to be honest. I don't really need three more families. How good are they, though? You're kind of terrible. You're not spectacular. Honestly, we did just bring some new people into the family. Yeah, sorry about that. You're being put to death. Though I kind of feel there should be a middle ground between put the refugees to death versus welcome them aboard as prominent members of our nobility. Like, how about you can't stay here, but I'm not going to murder you. That feels like that'd be a good middle ground. Also, apparently this is Scordicia over here. Right, from the picture I was kind of assuming, you know, further to the east, but apparently they're from up there. Right, just a handful more territories needed here. Honestly, yeah, the mercenaries at this point, you guys can... Uh, yeah, you can just go via my boat here, straight over to the island. Should be able to finish them off, and then pretty much we'll actually have everything we need in this part of the world. The 16,000 troops head over here. Sparta's doing a very good job just mopping up little bits of territory for me. But yeah, nice easy war right there. And sorry, I didn't realise you guys were going to be there. That's fine, you're dead now. And the war in Apulia is going very, very well indeed. Looks to me like there is actually... Ooh, 37,000 troops of the Brutia right there. So it's not going to go well for somebody. But when 20,000 more show up, I feel like that's got to go okay. Ooh, actually... They've been, oh, they were being slaughtered, then reinforcements showed up, then they were slaughtered again, but now another 46,000 are coming in. Oh, Brutia are really not wanting to give this one up, but in the end, they've been overwhelmed. But Apulia just lost a lot of men to that. I think, however, they do have enough manpower to make this happen, right? Yeah, Apulia's got plenty of manpower, so they can recover. How's Brutia doing? They've got manpower too, but... They're not doing so hot on money. Though actually, 11,000 troops have managed to make their way over here. Possibly they do actually have open borders with Rome, I'm not sure. Good news though, military traditions are available and ooh, these ones are interesting. So, I do actually have some cavalry in my army right now. That's actually true. So I could get cavalry skirmish tactics. But I feel like I'm not heavily dependent on that. Trireme cost would be fine, but I can do without it. No, Siegecraft. Siege ability plus 10%. Get sieges done faster. 
that's got to be the right way to go. And 2,000 Spartan troops are about to just embarrass the Green Aetolian army again. And hello, we've got ourselves a problem here. This is, hang on, fortress level, fortress level two. Right, sorry, my mistake. I'll send you some reinforcements to help out with that. Actually, I won't. I'll just send you the... Wait, those are... Those are the mercenaries. Right, okay, I will send you some reinforcements then. You guys, uh, get over there, help them out. The siege should be nice and fast because we've just actually sped it up by another 10%. I put a lot of tech into that. Sparta continuing to just embarrass these guys. They keep wandering off. They've got nowhere to go, though. This is just sad. Now, the Marshall faction want to call in some favours. Honestly, I'm probably pretty much okay with that, to be honest. What's the current situation in terms of the next election? Ah, it's the new guy, the kid with oratory of 11 of the civic faction. Honestly, I'm happy for you to counteract his power. So what does he actually want here? He wants to gain popularity and prominence. Is that literally it? Right, okay, you can definitely have that. That's absolutely fine. You can have some popularity and prominence. I do not care. Now, quick look at the fortress map over here. Yeah, there's one more fortress in Brutia itself. And the forces of Seculia are also floating around. So... As soon as they actually take this place, they will have actually taken every single fortress in southern Brutia. There might be one up here. Hang on. No, none whatsoever. So, as a result of that... Ooh, hang on. We got ourselves... Oh, no. Why did you send a skill 5 general? You're probably going to lose this one now, and you really shouldn't have done. No, you're going to win, but you should not have taken that much in the way of losses. And also, yeah, that island fell in no time whatsoever. Right. In which case... Time to actually get ourselves out of here. So, my forces, you guys return to Patry, that's fine. So, I could probably settle the war at this point. I've got what I need as a starting point. But, I feel like potentially, we might be able to do better than that. Because I would most definitely like Apulia to gain as much as they can from this war. At the bare minimum, take all of Italy down to the Straits. So, just a tiny bit of land to take off Siculia as well. And... There are no fortresses there. I think they used to be. You guys must have demolished the fortresses. Oh, no. Oh, you're going to regret doing that. Right. Deploy mercenaries. We're going to go and assist. But at this point, war score's ticking up. So I can basically end this war whenever I want. And there we go. The forces of Apulia have swung north. They are most definitely not allowing Brutia to have their way with any of this territory. In fact, they've sent arguably way too much, but whatever. You guys, uh, get ashore here. Start mopping up this territory. All we need to do now is the classic tactic that works so well for me in southern Greece. If we take and hold the strait... Ooh, they are... They're marching at me. Right, Um, I might want to get out of here, actually. I think it might be a bit late for me to get out of here. Okay, so my mercenaries are going to do a good job. In fact, actually, my my mercenaries might be about to win just because of morale. Right, well, that's that's interesting. And a tale of two cities. So what's going on over here? So we've got ourselves a problem between Kithera and Epidauros Limea. Right, so that's down over here in southern Greece. In short, one of them gets local tax plus 25%. One of them gets local unrest plus 2%. So pretty much that's going to go down to whoever has the largest economy, to be honest. And it is Epi Dalros Lemaire. Congratulations, you guys get the land. And back to that battle over there. Yes, indeed, I'm going to just somehow beat these men. I'm not 100% sure how I'm doing it. It is, ah, it's because I've got heavy infantry and they don't. Right. Yet more territory has just been taken. They've actually taken that fortress. There we go. I'm just going to chill out right here. They're going to send potentially even more troops in this direction. There's another 21,000 troops right there. So we might end up dying to them. If you guys would like to come south and help with that, they're going to send... Right, apparently we're going to win. Our 2,000 men are about to win this battle. I don't know how, but apparently they are. So this is all... How on earth do we have a chance against 21,000 men? I don't know. But... Apparently, they've got, like, no morale whatsoever. Our heavy infantry is just standing on top of a cliff and refusing to die. So, somehow, they're just completely incapable of penetrating our defences. I mean, I guess this is the benefit to my heavy infantry I was talking about. That massive plus 25% discipline, because somehow... Okay, they literally had to kill us to the last man. <laughs> Marvellous. So, we did lose, but they were close to breaking at the time. On the plus side, I'm not paying those mercenaries anymore, so that's good. Now, do I want to bother sending any reinforcements in this direction? 
Because I would like these guys to be able to actually take the southern tip of Italy. And Siculia is... Oh, you guys are sending all the troops. Fine, you know what? I don't think I need to send you guys reinforcements. I think you guys got this, actually. There are a lot of troops piling downwards to take care of this. So straight away, actually, this small force is doing a good job doing some major damage to the Siculian army. 19,000 more men are showing up. They don't actually have commanders, though, which is a bit of a concern. But still, you are doing a good job starting to weaken these guys. So that first engagement didn't go great. Income 19,000 men. Why do they not have generals? Why do they not have generals? Give them generals. Here we go. A strength 9 general. That's what we want to see. They're not going to be able to do anything about that. Oh my goodness, they're just going straight across into Sicily. Guys, secure this territory first, please. Well, at the bare minimum, they are actually going to take this land. And once they've taken... Oh, hang on. I don't know what they want to take, but those 21,000 men are about to be slaughtered because they've got no general whatsoever. Though then again, they're doing a surprisingly competent job. Did they just get a general on that at the last second? No, they do have a general. It's just Marshal of Zero. I don't know how he got the job. Wait, they're a tribe. Nobody gets the job. It's just who the clan leader is. So basically, they just have an absolutely abysmal clan leader. Gotcha. Time for an omen, by the way. And would you believe it's going to be the blessing of Hermes? Because why would it ever be anything else? Also, hello. Rome have woken up. They have actually declared war against Carthage. Right. So Carthage together with... Actually, they're also at war with... Uh, yeah, they're also at war with Boy up north. So uh, Carthage has been occupied... Uh, problem is, Rome, you only have 28 cohorts. And I think at this point, yeah, you've got no vassals whatsoever. Carthage has 118. All right. If they are actually able to come and get you, they will murder you. And Carthage appears to be at peace in the West right now. So uh, they've got nothing else to do other than come and attack you. Okay. So these guys have now taken everything up to the southern tip of Italy, but they're probably going to run north now because yes, indeed, we've actually got ourselves more troops coming in, taking some territory up north. Right, let's just see what we can do here, because you guys seem to have taken a lot of territory around here. I might be able to settle this in a way that I want it to be settled regardless. So, Aetolian Aetolia obviously comes to me. That's absolutely fine. And Aetolian Epirus needs to come to me as well. Right, so that's that's over there. That's part of Epirus, technically. Fine, so that doesn't actually eat up that much war score. In which case, you guys are going to eat that. You guys are going to eat that. But... You guys are actually doing a good job invading right now. I could basically just let them keep invading. I mean, is there any reason not to just let them take Sicily? I mean, they're good friends of mine. They're gonna win this war if I just basically let them keep doing it. Yeah, screw it. Let the war run on. Meanwhile, Macedon seems to be down to 37 cohorts. So they've had to break down some of their army. I mean, I could just start another war with Macedon right now. I don't see any reason why not. I may as well just kind of crack on with it, really. Ah, yes, and don't forget Sparta. Send them a gift, so their relationship is now up to 200. Uh, can I actually begin integrating them, or do I need to be at peace first? No, we can indeed integrate them. So, let's get that done in that case. It's going to take a while, but screw it. We'll just begin the integration now. And yeah, the armies of Apulia are just swinging down south, murdering a whole bunch of stuff. As for up here, these guys are making very slow progress, so I think we can basically just ignore them. Then again, do I want Apulia to ever have a border with Carthage? And obviously we're holding the Olympics. Because if they do, that might drag me into a Carthaginian war at some point. And also they seem to be struggling against some of the armies of Siculia right there. Yeah, actually, I feel like they're lacking in good quality generals. They've taken some land, but maybe we actually say this is enough for the time being. Maybe we say this is fine. Because it looks like, yeah, there's actually a few fortresses dotted around here. Only two of them belong to Siculia, though. And the bare minimum, ooh, they are, they are actually doing some nasty work to the forces of Apulia right now. Possibly we should just cut our losses and force them to hand over all this territory that they've already taken. Oh yeah, actually at this point, Siculia and Brutia's combined armies appear to be tearing apart the forces of Apulia, purely because Apulia doesn't have good quality clan leaders. Right, in fact, actually, they're, they've lost a lot. They've lost a huge amount, and ah, their manpower's run out. Right, at this point, they're just going to take more and more losses. In which case, time to peace out.
And I tell you what, I will actually let you take these three territories you've taken, just so you do actually have some things uh, that you own over here. That little island too. By the way, you're going to be paying me as much as you can afford. 134 gold. Thank you very, very much indeed. Uh, so yeah, they get all of that. Southern Italy will now belong to Apulia. And a tiny bit of Sicily too. Give them a bit of time to recharge. That'll be fine. Brutia loses the vast majority of their economy. And will probably be picked off by Rome later. I'm not sure. I get this territory over here. And a peace officer can't have a combined value higher than 100. Okay, hang on. I need to get it below 100. Take all the money out. That's down to 103. In which case, we might need to actually take some of these cities away from you. I would like you to keep Masana, because then you've actually got a presence on this side of the island. But I might need to take some of the rest of this away from you. There we go. Back up to 99. They don't get that tiny island. They don't get this bit over here. But at the bare minimum, they do have possessions on Sicily itself, which should help them out a fair bit. And there we go. Job done. Everybody is at peace. And I don't need any more people in the Empire. So unfortunately, you guys are getting yourself executed. So, what's going on in Phrygia, by the way? So the Phrygian revolt is... Oh, Egypt! Egypt, I'm so sorry! What happened to you? Oh, you were doing so well. Right, Egypt was having a lovely, peaceful game. Then some rebels came along and ruined it. So it looks like the Phrygian revolt have done a good job mopping up this territory over here. Together with... Ah, also, sieging down Cappadocia. The only significantly powerful subject that Phrygia has access to. But, Phrygia itself has done a pretty good job mopping up some of the territory around here. So sooner or later there has to be a massive clash in this part of the world to settle this once and for all. Phrygia's down to only a thousand odd manpower, so that's not great. And 58 cohorts. Meanwhile the Rebellion... Ooh, hang on, that's... You're not the Rebellion, are you? No, sorry, you're someone unrelated. Good, I was worried there for a second. Uh, you've still got 149 cohorts, but you're pretty much out of manpower. Right. So keep an eye on them. They're continuing to just punch each other in the face and probably will be doing so for some time. Apulia is still in great shape, though it's going to take them some time to recover. So I probably won't invite them to the Macedonian War. And I believe we should actually have supply limit plus 10%. Yes, take that every time. And loyalty up. Yeah, take loyalty. Always take loyalty. Loyalty is great. So, Sparta's currently being integrated. That's going to take a bit of time to do, however. Probably time to just buy some more mercenaries. And then, it's time to move straight on Mastodon. Because I don't necessarily need all of Mastodon, but I do need some of it. In particular, hang on, decision tree, the Pan-Hellenic League, Larissa. That's all I absolutely need to take, but I wouldn't mind having a bit more of it too. Bear in mind, of course, Mastodon is an odd shape. Because there's this massive mountain range right here. So I could actually take, yeah, large parts of the coast up to here without actually exposing myself to a major border with Macedon. Because, of course, I won't be able to take all of this in one go purely because of the limit of 100 war score per peace treaty. Probably I want to try and take up to, say, this part of the world. Yeah, all of this over here. The coast up towards over here. That'll probably be enough. And with a treasury of plus 39, including plus 50 off commerce, that's just ridiculous. We are doing so much trade right now. Hang on, over to the economy here. Yeah, plus 150%. And Laconia making 15 by itself. The Aegean about 10. The Aegean are actually in second place now. Crete has fallen way down. That used to be making so much money for us. These days, it's a pretty small part of the empire. And there we go. Fridges currently a bit on the dependent side of mercenaries, though. Uh, hello. I've got 35,000 mercenaries just living in Ellis. How long have you guys been here? Possibly mercenaries just start moving in at some point if you get big enough. I'm not sure, but we could hire these guys. But then again, I might be better off hiring two groups of smaller mercenaries. Though actually, 35,000, that's not too bad. You could be my main Macedon killing army, and then I could have a secondary force who go around just doing some low-level capturing. That's probably not bad at all, actually. Yeah, there's a small force right here. Can I actually afford that? I can't quite afford that, but I've got enough of a war chest banked. It's not a problem. Yeah, you know what? Let's get it done. You guys, congratulations. You've been recruited. And while we're waiting for the mercenaries to just get their morale up, you guys, uh, congratulations. You're now building a road. Ah, yes. And those mercenaries do actually let me see. 35,000 troops are just hanging out right here. So uh, we now know where the Macedonian army is actually located. It's pretty much entirely over there. So we can go and snipe that off the moment the war begins. And in terms of fleet, they've got 20 ships somewhere. Do we know where those are precisely? Deploy my forces around over here. Let's go and locate them. 
Ah, yes, and these conquests have actually given me two new provinces, technically. So, Aetolia and Epirus. So, naturally, they're both going over to encourage trade. Congratulations. So, this one tiny insignificant island has actually got three trade routes all to itself, which is going to be worth a huge amount of money, and that's just lovely. In fact, all those extra trade routes might actually be enough to... Ooh, close. We're almost breaking even, even with all these mercenaries. But yeah, with so many trade routes, they are disappearing as territory changes hands. And here's something we don't see very often. We've got a disloyal character. Who on earth is this? This is the first time this has happened the entire game. I've been very good at keeping control of loyalty. Okay, this guy is nobody. He's also not a citizen. I'm not even sure where he came from, to be honest. So, uh, I mean, I guess we could just bribe him or grant him citizenship status. That would actually make him more loyal, so... Welcome aboard, I suppose. And there we go. The Great Road has now been extended a fairly large amount of distance. Good, good. Uh, right, so. What is our war goal actually wanting to be here? Because uh, where's Larissa? Larissa's actually inside this territory. So province of Thessaly in Macedonia. Fine. So we most definitely want to be making sure we take Thessaly. Probably that's where we put the war goal down in that case. All right. Claim on the province of Thessaly. There we go. These guys still actually being guaranteed by Egypt and the Seleucids, but just double checking here. Yeah, Egypt's got bigger problems at the minute, and they still don't have any fleet, so they're unlikely to get involved. Seleucids, uh, yeah, the Seleucids are um, busy as well. Busy, slowly dying. In fact, they're barely even there anymore. Oh, hello. Apple Lear has decided to actually declare war on Rome again. Right, they are going straight back in. You know what? They didn't even invite me. I'm starting to feel left out here. I'd have gone to help. I'd have gladly provided naval support. Maybe even sent you some mercenaries. La-di-da. And they want to take Campania, which should be, uh, yeah, about there. So they can probably do that, to be honest. I don't really see Rome standing up to them. I mean, this is pretty ballsy, by the way, because they've still got, like, no manpower whatsoever. It's going to take them a while to recover from that last war, but they are straight back into attacking Rome. I guess because Rome has only 32 cohorts and is also still busy with the Carthage situation. And boy. So, uh, yeah, Rome is not going to be in a position to resist this. Rome is just being eaten alive right now. Alright, claims are down. Roads have been not fully built, but built enough under the circumstances. So, we just need to figure out where we want to attack. Obviously, I would like some of my finest armies to be moving in this direction, ready to intercept the main forces of Macedon. So for that reason, mercenaries, you stop moving in that direction, even though you're going to start taking attrition immediately. <laughs> right, okay. Maybe we actually want to declare war, then start you moving, just so you don't take too much damage, because uh, we don't know they're there. You know what, let's just have you moving in that direction regardless. Let's actually have you right there when the war begins. My main force of 15,000 men, one of my biggest forces is going to move over here to provide support. Between that 35,000 and my 15,000, we should be able to slaughter the armies of Macedon. Meanwhile, I have two groups of 10,000 and mercenaries of 21,000 right there. They're going to head into Macedon and just start laying down the hurt on this place, sieging it down as fast as possible. I will take some losses to attrition, but screw it, Macedon's big. I want this to happen nice and fast. And better and better, we have confirmed location for Macedon's fleet. If they try and leave harbour, we will immediately slaughter them. With double the number of boats and a superior admiral. Just out of interest, over in Roman territory... Ah, I see. Handful of fortresses over here. Other than that, there's not a single fortress between Apulia and Rome itself. And Rome only has natural level 1 fortifications. They could go and take Rome. We might be about to see Rome fall. Oh, and Apulia's called us in. We're going. 100% am I willing to go to war with Rome. Screw Rome. Rome only has three boats. Right, I'm not sure I'm going to actually be able to help much with the naval campaign. They don't really have a navy. So you guys can handle this. I will gladly be involved, though. I'm afraid I've kind of got my own war to be getting on with. I won't invite you right now, though. That's fine. I can handle this by myself. And the Seleucid Empire has technically become the enemy war leader. I'm genuinely surprised that... Oh yeah, Egypt, which is the source of literally all of my trade. Like, all of it. Right, okay, so I'm... I just lost a lot of trade. We should be fine. I've got plenty of money banked up. And unsurprisingly, yeah, that dashing new civic faction leader is going to be the next leader. He's, uh, 
pretty good. He'll do. He's going to make us plenty of oratory, though we're swimming in it right now. What else do we know about you ahead of time? Freeman happiness is going to be up. National tax is going to be up. National commerce income is going to be up. Actually, you know what? You are really damn good. And commerce income up 10% if he's governor. And he's going to be governor of the vast majority of our provinces just by default. Basically anything in Greece. So uh, actually, this guy's a real money spinner. Love it. All right, next up, check the fortress situation. There are like no fortresses. Right, so we can pretty much march straight in and deal with all of this. Until we actually reach the very north of the map, there is not a single fortress in Macedon. Love it. Right, guys, uh, you just start moving forward if you'd be so kind. And mercenaries and small forces, you just start moving in and sieging this place down. And, oh, we're just going to immediately take all those places for free, thanks to the Spartan fortresses. Love it. And we have located the army. Right, hunt them down. Do not let them get away. Right now, they're at low morale. Yeah, this is a really big change that needs to be made, by the way. The AI just constantly floats its troops on low pay. And as a result of that, when you begin the war, their armies are incredibly vulnerable. That needs to be fixed. Honestly, the AI just needs to not do that anymore because it makes wars very easy to win if you can figure out where the enemy army is. So we've immediately taken a giant pile of territory right over there. My army's moving in and doing a little bit of damage. They're starting to flee north. Honestly, I'm not going to catch them. Right, and there we go. New guy is now in power. No problem whatsoever. That should mean we're making a lot more money. I'm just going to have these guys just slowly move north, start just sieging their way up because that's just a giant pile of slaves. To be honest, yeah, we're going to get a load of slaves out of this campaign, so that's absolutely fine. You guys start moving over here, you guys start moving over here, and at this point, we're just going to carpet siege northwards. I've got so much manpower right now, it's fine. So yeah, we're losing 400 men to attrition this month, but I'm gaining 451. So as a result of that, yeah, we're actually going to be doing just fine. I've got plenty of manpower coming in. And at this point, these three small armies are doing a very good job just moving up the coast. We are gathering slaves like nobody's business and... Uh, ooh, party leader of the Marshall faction. Right, who's the new guy? Someone who is absolutely terrible. Right, so the Marshall faction is going to lose all of its influence in the Senate. Gotcha. Yeah, we got ourselves a bad merchant leader and a bad marshal leader. But there is a decent merchant person over here who could be Tesmo Terte. So let's just actually yeah, boost up the merchant faction a bit like that. Also, for as long as he's in my service, the mercenary leader can also handle my martial advances. So uh, go on then. Have fun being a researcher, I guess. And hello, I think the Macedonian Navy tried to break out and was immediately destroyed. So we've got their Admiral, their entire Navy was wiped out because it had nowhere else to go. Possibly it was forced to leave port after we took the city. So, okay, this is good. This is looking good right here. And yeah, just keep this force moving up so it's close by to the mercenaries as they walk up. Because once the territory is taken, we don't take attrition anymore. So these forces want to stick close by to each other just in case. Because it's a bit of a long walk from here to around here because of the mountain range. And more and more troops being sent to Alice. Looks like they're actually planning to counterattack at this point. So uh, deploy our armies to reinforce, please. Uh, they are sending in 26,000 men. But it looks like we're actually going to have the advantage anyway. Because uh, our troops are just so superior. Yeah, look at that. Look at that right there. They can't stand up to me. They cannot stand up to me. The reinforcements have arrived and now, now we should be able to chase those guys down and murder them. We were on hills anyway, I think. Yeah, there's hills here. They picked a bad moment to attack. They could have waited for a better moment. And actually, it looks like every single part of their army has looped around over here. And hello, what's going on here? Right. Carvia has also picked this moment to pick a fight with these guys. Oh, I love it. Right here. Carvia, who are you precisely? No one in particular. They've just decided Macedon's weak right now, so they're moving in to take some free real estate. You know what? You're welcome to it. Welcome aboard. And bloody hell, Apulia are right at the gates of Rome. Literally, they are just one or two steps over at this point. Rome is just pretty much entirely collapsing. Ooh, something I'm very glad I've noticed, actually. I've not actually taken Thessaly, because I forgot about this tiny, tiny island over here. So I'm going to send one force down there to take care of that. Meanwhile, hang on, we must be getting close by to the... Yeah, we're getting close by to the fortresses at this point. So, uh, at this point... I might actually be ready to just push on the Macedonian capital. If I take that out, that's it really. They don't really have much else. Yeah, in all fairness, 
These guys could just push on the capital. Screw it. Get in there. Take it. So we're going to very, very easily indeed beat the garrison that's trying to actually guard the place. And then the siege begins. The capital of Macedonia is going to fall to us. And in addition, hang on. Are you guys trying and failing to take out Spartans? No, they were able to drive off the Spartans. That's a shame. I thought the Spartans were doing well there for a second. Right, so Macedonia's not really got much left, actually. They are losing strength fast. And there we go. Once this island gets taken, our war score will start ticking up. And eventually, we'll just be able to take a giant pile of Macedonia. And now they are... They're not sieging Rome yet. Rome is only a level 1 city. I don't know why they're not just going for it. But what they do most certainly have is a Campania lockdown. So yeah, war score over there is going to start ticking up too. Oh, Apulia, you are just going to eat Rome whole. Though, oh no. Boy! Boy has been destroyed. Rome ate boy. Also, fun stuff over here. Britain is actually, yeah, coalescing very nicely. Duro Triga doing a beautiful job taking large swathes of the country right there. Well done. And looks like the Macedonians are down to about 10,000 men at this point. They're going to come and try and take me on, apparently. So, they are welcome to do so. And oh yeah, it is a slaughter. These guys just cannot stand up to me at all. In fact, actually, they're weirdly dependent on cavalry and skirmishers. I'm not sure whether they lost their control of iron at some point. I swear they actually do have a bit of iron floating around, but maybe they just can't afford heavy infantry anymore. Regardless, they are being torn apart. And Pella has been taken. Though actually, looks to me like, yeah, there's actually a big force of Macedonians from somewhere. I'm not sure where those came from, but... We need to be a little bit careful here. Just a little bit careful. Right. It's only a strength 5 general. We should be able to take it out. Just uh, bring over... Hmm. Actually, there's not many people to bring over. Right. Deploy the mercenaries to go and hunt them down. The mercenaries should be able to kill them. Hopefully. These guys seem to be... Oh. These guys have actually got themselves, yeah, a decent amount of strength. I see. Actually, it looks like I'm going to win this one. The game is saying it's likely we'll win. Deploy reinforcements just in case. Also, what the hell are you still doing on this island? Go and take care of this, please. Right, how is this going? Oh, their morale is just dreadful. At this point, my heavy infantry can just stand and fight all day. They're taking a lot of damage, but we're taking a lot of damage too. They're going to win this one, actually. They are going to win this one, unfortunately. Partly because... Oh, uh, why have you actually got shock action? Right, they're actually not doing so well. We are defeated. I think that was my mercenaries right there. But now, these guys have been heavily weakened. Also, apparently there was a battle going on up here, which we just won. So congratulations to these mercenaries who just won a battle I didn't know was even happening. The problem is, with double fortress around here... It's actually going to be pretty difficult for me to get my decent quality 15,000 armies round to assist against the Macedonian forces, who at this point appear to have pretty much abandoned the coast. At the bare minimum, I'd like to be able to take one of these fortresses, just so I've got a good choke point against Macedon going forward. And it looks like we should be able to handle that force just because of the low quality general. The game is saying it's very likely we'll win. I do have reinforcements barreling in. I've got 19,000 troops. They are taking... Oh, we are taking casualties too... But reinforcements are on their way in. Sparta, if you'd like to get involved, we're actually, um, we're losing more men than I'd like. No, the reinforcements arrived. Okay, now, now we are dishing it out as well as we're receiving it. Good, 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 good. Well done. We have just taken a lot of casualties right there. We've got the manpower, though. We do have the manpower to recover. And also, we've got political problems. Honestly, that doesn't seem so important, though. So we've got the general of First Stratos and also the head of a family who's just having a bit of a tiff with uh, the general of the mercenaries. Okay, side with the guy who's part of the faction and actually important. Yes, definitely. Oh, and this is no good at all. Unfortunately, these guys who are coming down from the north just made it to this fortress before I could make it there. And this is, oh, it's only a level one fortress. I was really hoping it might be level 2, because then they'd probably attrition below 10,000 before they can actually take it. Honestly, this isn't the worst thing in the world. I can just build a massive fortress around here, just to basically be a new border against these guys. This is a fairly tight, easy place to hold. It's fine if they want to have it. Right, honestly, we've probably at this point taken so much I can't even claim it in the piece anyway. So, I may as well just actually get peace sorted out. And, uh, actually, it's only 26. I might need this war to go on a bit longer, purely for the sake of war score going up. And hang on, have you guys actually done it? 
Have you mad bastards actually done it? No, they haven't taken Rome itself. They have not taken the Eternal City. They've just taken everything around it. Rome, meanwhile, has managed to field, yeah, 14,000 down over here, 9,000 over here. So they're now trying to take some of this territory back. But the question is, can they really stand up to these guys? Because finally, you guys have got some proper generals. Not spectacular ones, but at least you do actually have, yeah, rank 7 general, 23,000 men. You could probably beat both of these forces. So they will hand over Macedonian Thessaly. That they're totally fine with. And Macedonian Epirus. I'd like to have that. No. They're not willing to do that yet. Well, in which case, I guess we just need to keep kicking their asses for a while. Fine. And honestly, with my mercenaries so badly battered, I may as well just actually get some more mercenaries in play. Here we go. 20,000 troops right here. Welcome aboard. And 4,500 fell back all the way over here because they lost at some point. So you guys just work your way up there. Shouldn't take you too long with the road system I've been constructing. Yeah, it should be nice and simple. Oh, and genuinely very sad news here. So Anazippos Diadid, the guy who had, what was it, Marshal of 12 or 13, he has passed on. I mean, in some ways in his later years, he was rather overshadowed by the fact that someone else showed up with Marshal of 15, which was just ridiculous. But still... This man won so many victories for us. Well done. Now, unfortunately, it looks like my mercenaries are about to be picked off by the Macedonians who have regrouped before we can actually uh, get them any reinforcements. But that's fine. Because war score is now ticking up. We should hopefully soon be able to... Oh, yeah, their morale was just too low to resist. They did a decent job, bless them. They did all right, but they're going to fall back. That's okay. We got reinforcements coming up. It's going to take these guys a long time to take their capital back. In fact, bring it all together, guys. Bring it all together. We're going for one major assault to push this army back again. Because they are taking bad attrition right now. And they cannot push over the river while we still hold Pella. And it looks like Carvi has actually made peace with Macedon. So, uh, this is interesting. This is interesting right here because... Uh, do I even want this over here? No, I'm never going to be able to take this over here. I don't need this over here. So don't worry about going to take any of this fortress stuff. Though, uh, if I do take it, that will probably just speed up the war score a bit. What level is that fortress? Level 1. You guys get over there and... Actually, don't do that just yet. Wait. We need to take out the Macedonian armies first. Then we can go and take care of that. Oh, we do have a problem though. So apparently, the governor I sent over to Caria Literalis... That guy is starting to have thoughts about independence from us. But on the downside, he's popular because, yeah, he's part of the populist faction. So we either say we don't move against him and he loses 50 loyalty regardless. How's that actually doing, by the way? It's, ooh, right. It's, it's not currently 100. It's currently 74.96, but okay, right, whatever. Or the debt of treason must be paid in blood. Let's say we're not moving against him just now. We'll keep a close eye on that guy. Right, troops moving into position for a mass assault on the Macedonian army right here. These 14,000 are walking through their territory to go and take care of this. Don't care. Everyone, move in, move in, move in. Relieve the siege of Pella. They're not having it back. Oh, they've decided to naff off. And by the way, you guys are also taking on Spartans. Oh, you didn't want to take on Spartans. No, you did not. That heavy infantry is tearing them apart. We've caught these guys out of position at this point. We're taking a fair bit of damage too. But they're taking... Well, they're not taking more. But their morale is collapsing. So, in short, the siege is going to be relieved. In both cases, they're going to lose a major battle. And hopefully, if we're lucky... Yep, yeah, there we go. So, a battle has been lost right over there. Though... Kind of everybody lost. Everybody lost apart from Sparta. Sparta's fine. And the Battle of Pella has been won as well. Beautiful. These guys desperately trying to take some of this territory back. But at this point, they've got nothing left. And Rome, to their credit, is doing a decent job pushing back against Apulia. They might have actually been able to, well... They haven't really won. It's just they're staying at the back and mopping up this territory. While Apulia marches further and further north. So... Apple is not really using its troops very effectively right now. They're just not doing a good job. Meanwhile, Brutia are suffering significant revolts over here. Yeah, some of their territory's just gone rogue as well. So, uh, Italy is definitely looking a bit on the messy side right now. Okay, here's something good though. They would be willing to hand over Epirus and the territory with Larissa right now. So, uh, I don't get all of the territory I've occupied, but 
I do push them into what I'd say is actually a pretty darn good little chokehold round over here. I mean, they're going to struggle to actually get through against us right now. Yeah, you know what? That's actually a good spot. That's a really good little choke. I'm going to say yes to that. Together with... Ooh, not all the money, mind. Uh, they're wanting to pay me... Oh, come on. You're paying me some wall reparations. Uh, right, 70. Uh, how much are you wanting to pay me for this? 70. 77, but not 78 gold. That would be ridiculous. And that's a lot of aggressive expansion too, but the old aggressive expansion's pretty much worn off at this point. So, uh, screw it, my territory now. And break down the mercenaries, please. Break down the mercenaries. And yeah, the Phrygian revolt is definitely going in an interesting direction, which is, uh, in the west, Phrygia's doing a good job taking back its territory. To the east, the Phrygian revolt is mopping up the Mediterranean coast very nicely. We are, however, still at war with Rome at the minute, which is becoming, yeah, a very messy war indeed. Though it does look like Apulia will be able to take at least some of the fortresses up north, so that's good for them. And the fortresses in Campania itself have already been occupied. So they do have this area locked down pretty effectively. But until these two bits of territory are under occupation, yeah, war score's not ticking up at all. So uh, I think I might need to go and provide some help to these guys, just so they figure out how to war correctly. First, however, I've got some trade routes to fulfil, including, oh yeah, we got some new trade routes as well, because uh, this is technically part of a new region, isn't it? Hang on. Yeah, this is actually technically Macedonia. Epirus is in Greece, but yeah, Thessaly is in Macedonia, so we need a new governor for those guys. Here we go, someone just perfect here. So this guy is just. Local unrest down, because this place is probably going to be a bit annoyed at me for the minute because of the recent invasion. So he's not necessarily that good at his job, but he will keep the local population happy. And no, 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 we're encouraging trade, because when are we not encouraging trade? Slight problem though. Egypt is actually not willing to renew trade with me on this occasion. Right, Egypt, me and you need to be, oh yeah, Egypt. So Egypt, who I kind of depend upon to sell me stuff, yeah, they're having a few problems at the minute, aren't they? Egypt appears to have more troops, both of them have got good manpower, economy's in good shape for both too. Right, we probably want to actually just help Egypt along here. Send them some money immediately, I need Egypt to cheer the hell up. Here we go. Improve opinion. Let's actually just send some diplomats over there. I need Egypt to think we're pretty cool in order that we can continue trading as soon as possible. There we go. That's good enough. Egypt's now willing to trade with us. Just. Right. Had to convert some money into civic power to make it happen, but we are now doing a full set of trade routes. And that is presumably going to be worth... Yeah, quite a bit of money, actually. Plus 67 gold every single month. Love it. And I also just remembered to make one of those trade routes into camels. So I do now have access to camels and my camel core can actually start recovering. And don't forget, fortresses. They don't need to be here anymore. So that can be demolished right there. But we are going to be wanting a fortress up here. Because I have no interest in attacking Carvia. So yeah, we just want to make sure they don't see us as a nice easy target. So uh, get a couple of fortresses built right there, please. And a small standing force of 10,000 men, just so they know we mean business. That should do the job to deter them for the time being. Not sure we really need to actually have borders versus Macedonia, however. Do we actually need to bother? And also, are we going to actually bother taking them over in future? Or are we- Ooh! Hello! Right! Apulia decided to finish their own war, and they took a fair bit of territory, but... Not all of what they could have had, to be honest. I mean... Yeah, I feel like you guys could have done better than that. Also, Brutia seems to be in a fair bit of trouble. In fact, the Brutian revolt has straight away declared war against Rome. So hang on. Rome, have you done a deal with Brutia right now? Nope, Rome has no relationships with anybody whatsoever. Rome's just decided to go it alone because that's been working so well for them so far. Ah, but Carthage has picked this moment to actually declare war against Siculia. They want to take some of this territory back. Okay. Fair enough. Interesting. So potentially Siculia is going to get squeezed out and... Uh, oh, I really hope I don't get pulled into a war with Carthage. I don't want to be in a war with Carthage. They seem quite big. Though I will say, now we've actually got ourselves two sub-detachments of 10,000 guarding the Macedonian border and the Carthian border. Yeah, this main force of First Stratos, they could probably do with a handful more than 15,000 troops. 
Two more units of light cavalry for you, together with seven more units, I would say, of heavy cavalry. That's the good stuff. Add in two more camels, because camels are fun. Four more archers as well. There we go. Now that's a decent standing army for us to maintain. And get the navy to a nice round even 40 ships. I think we actually lost one or two of them during the last war. And if you guys would like to just stop beating each other up for a minute, that'd be great because it's really disrupting my trade routes. Actually, I just had a thought. Right here at Larissa, this place has actually got a border with here and just with here. So this would actually be a good place to put down. No, 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 no. We don't want granaries or whatever or any of these training camps. I want... A nice double fortress, just so Larissa is a nice safe little guarantee against Macedon doing anything stupid up north. Oh, and here come the newly trained troops. I flippin' love it. Oh yes, that reminds me. We don't have good roads anymore, do we? No. No, we do not. Right, well, we need to sort that out immediately. You guys, get over there. Let's start building some new roads. Right, another 10,000 men have been detached for road building duties. But, remember, they're part of the first Stratos. When we remerge them, that'll all be fine. And tragically, the Marshal, what was it, 15 or 16 individual, has also passed on. He never actually fought in a battle, but by golly did he shake down a lot of peasants for tax. Over in technology, Stoicism for National Unrest minus one. Oh yeah, that's pretty damn nice right there. In fact, that's almost ridiculously powerful. Though unfortunately, a new leader kind of snuck up on me there while I was distracted by building roads. And he is kind of terrible, right, the leader of the religious faction. No idea how you got yourself elected, but apparently you did. And yeah, we've got another terrible leader coming up too. Great. Ah, yes, and there's a thought as I build my amazing mega road. Uh, if I want to integrate Sparta a bit faster, we probably want to actually change over to... Uh, there we go. Integration speed up. Lovely. It's going to cost 100 oratory, but we are swimming in that right now. We can just change it back after we're done. Oh, it is complete. The great labour. We have a full rig road around Greece. Doesn't make much sense down here, but whatever. Then it goes along here, past Megra. There's a bit of a spur road down to Athens and also over here to Karistos. Then it actually goes over here, all the way up to our northern border with Carvia, together with all the way up to the northern border with Macedonia. And now we just wait for Sparta to be integrated, and we can put, yeah, a little road down over here, just so there's actually a road link going down to the far side of the strait, in case we're ever crossing the strait for a pat try. Oh, it's beautiful. And there it is. Sparta has been integrated. And we're going to get rid of that fortress. We don't need that. This fortress ceases to exist, because that was just a capital fortress. And there we go. We have now got ourselves a great big massive Ikea. But that, of course, is only just the beginning. Everybody to your positions. A whole new world is about to begin because I believe I've got this correct. We can now form the Panhellenic League, giving me a bonus trade route, sits and happiness up 10% for the entire flipping empire, together with Ellis itself, massive boost to local population growth. Commerce income up by 10%. Civilization level, sits and happiness up again. Oh yeah, we're doing this, though I really hope it's a nice colour. Because if it's not, I'm going to be so sad. Oh, we've gone purple! Right, okay, it's a little bit more of a modest purple than I wanted. But it is purple, so that is nice and on brand, yes. And now uh, we are indeed uh, the Pan-Hellenic League, or possibly just the Hellenic League. I thought we were supposed to be the Pan-Hellenic League. No, we're just the Hellenic League now. Possibly the Pan bit is just a shoot. Pan means all in ancient Greek, by the way. That's why it's Pan-Hellenic. It means all the Greeks. And with that, the already slightly ridiculous amount of trade occurring inside Laconia can get even flipping more. And by the way, we may as well just throw down even more flipping markets, because go on, we're swimming in money right now. Markets for everybody. You know, we don't actually have livestock here right now, so may as well get that in just to even further boost population growth. And... Uh, Actually, Egypt might be out of it. Yeah, Egypt's not doing so hot, by the way. The Egyptian rebellion's going pretty well. But throw all that in. Oh, bloody hell yeah. So, that's a lot of bonuses to population growth rate. Love it. Yeah, the thing is, it looks like Egypt's doing all right. But then you actually remember, most of this is actually pretty much empty. All you're seeing right now, that's the actual Egypt bit of Egypt. So, uh, 
pretty much the entirety of the Egyptian capital has been eaten. This is their economic center. This is where all their trade goods are. I think the Egyptian revolt might actually win because there's not much down here in the south of Egypt. And the Phrygian revolt, meanwhile, that's just mopping up the last few bits and pieces around here. And by the way, who on earth is attacking you guys? Right, Samaria and Judea are going at each other. Yeah, they broke away and became independent from Phrygia at some point, and now, unfortunately, they're going to war. But yeah, Phrygian revolt's just going to eat all of this, and then it's just going to be a showdown. It's going to be somewhere around here. Sooner or later, that match needs to be decided, because it looks like right now, if I had to guess, the Phrygian armies are over here, because they've painted all of this yellow again. So, uh, interesting. But sooner or later, they have to come to blows. And honestly... I'm looking decent. I'm looking a decent size right now. I've got 50 cohorts on the field, and I'm still turning a ridiculous profit, because commerce is just insane at the minute. Oh, it's a good-looking empire. A very nice-looking empire indeed. Even if it is slightly too similar in colour to the Phrygian Revolt. So, hopefully, yeah, Phrygia actually takes this back, so that's back to being yellow. That'll be much easier to read. But, I can't help but notice one thing too. I'm up to 96 cities, and when you hit 100, you move up from regional power to major power, and then, then you're playing in the big leagues, damn it. And also, I'm glad I came in here, because I need to remember to go back over to Merchant Stance, I don't need to subjugate anymore. Lovely, well done. Because once I'm a major power, then certain other major powers will start taking me a bit more seriously. In particular, Egypt, or possibly the Egyptian Revolt, who I think might be going to win at some point, and... Carthage. Now, me and Carthage haven't exactly been friends so far, but I feel like me and Carthage, we understand each other. Me and Carthage are great trading empires, very much dependent on a strong navy and the use of mercenaries. Me and Carthage have a lot in common. In particular, the fact that we hate Rome, who have once again been attacked by more barbarians from the north and appear to be losing that war as well. So, well done Rome, it's only a matter of time, alright? This isn't done until Rome has been destroyed. I think I could help Carthage do it. So, we'll start making our first moves towards that next time, ladies and gentlemen. Because I need a handful more cities, and I think I know where I'm going to get them from. We will discuss that very, very soon indeed. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nut. And this has been Imperator Rome. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This, this guy's enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear!